Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to today's Seismic Academy. Our session today will be on Mohr Circle, a critical topic in solid mechanics for understanding stress transformations. So before we start, I would like to give a little background on myself. I'm going into my third year of civil engineering at the University of Toronto. I have been on Seismic in both my first and second year as a general member and construction lead, respectively. This year, I'm a junior, junior structural design lead. I hope this session will help further your understanding of the concept of how to solve stress transformations using more circle. This topic is critical in our tower construction when dealing with the angle at which we connect members together and understanding how the connection angle impacts the stresses in a member. So the topics we will be covering today are as follows. First, stress transformations, then developing more circle, then how to use more circle, and finally, an example on using more circle. So before we dive into the application of Mohr circle to understand how to calculate stress transformations, we must first understand what a stress transformation is. To understand stre stress transformations, we may consider a cut along the length of the element shown. The force P on the element acts parallel to the x-axis and causes internal stress. When we make a cut on an element perpendicular to this force, a normal stress will develop, denoted by sigma x, as it is parallel to the x-axis. The x and y dire axis directions on the cut are the same as the x and y axis for the element, since we have made our cut perpendicular to the force. However, this is not always the case for all cuts. Consider a new cut along the element's length, which is no longer perpendicular to the force direction. The force P on the element causes internal stress the same as before. However, rather than there being solely a normal stress, there is also a, she a shear stress denoted by tau xy. This is to satisfy equilibrium, as without the shear stress, the normal stress would create an unbalanced force acting in the y direction. We change the x and y axis to reflect this cut. The x axis is perpendicular to the cut surface and is denoted by x prime. The y axis is parallel to the cut surface and is denoted by y prime. We must also denote the normal stress and shear stress to reflect this axis change. The new normal stress is denoted by sigma x prime, and the new shear stress is denoted by tau xy prime. These normal and shear stress changes, these normal and shear stresses change as the element or cut is rotated, as we will see. To develop a formula for, the, for general stress transformations, we may consider a small section along the length of an element with both a normal and shear stress. Note that shear stress is the same on all surfaces due to the principle of complementary shear stress as discussed in the shear flow lecture. This small section is a cut, and the internal stresses along the cut surface are exposed. Along this cut surface, tau xy prime and sigma x prime develop. The x and y at an angle of theta, denoted by x prime and y prime. The y prime is parallel to the cut surface, and x prime is normal to the cut surface, as stated earlier. To satisfy equilibrium on the cut surface, stresses must be balanced in the x prime and y prime axis, axes. Technically, it doesn't matter which axis we use, as long as we use two perpendicular lines of reference for equilibrium. But using x prime and y prime, as I have defined them, will allow us to isolate for the unknown stresses on the cut surface easily. Since we are dealing with stresses, we must consider the area over which the stress acts in order to solve for the forces generated. The largest area on the element is denoted as dA, and it is the cut surface. The other areas are components of dA. The bottom area is sine theta multiplied by dA, and the left area is cos theta multiplied by dA. We are using dA as we are considering a small section along the element. First, we may solve for equilibrium in the x prime axis. This will allow us to solve for sigma prime. We break down each stress into components along the x prime and y prime axis and multiply them over the area which they act. For the x prime axis, we use the x prime axis component of each stress. Notice how only tau x y prime is not present as it has no component on the x prime axis. After, we may divide by dA and isolate for sigma x prime using double angle theorems. This gives sigma x prime is equal to sigma x plus sigma y divided by two plus sigma x minus sigma y divided by two multiplied by cos two theta plus tau x y multiplied by sine two theta. Next, we may solve for equilibrium in the y prime axis, which will allow us to solve for tau x y prime, breaking down each stress into components and multiplying them over the area they act. 
the same as before, we get the force equilibrium in the y prime direction. Notice how only sigma x prime is not present as there is no component in the y prime direction. After simplifying, tau x y prime is equal to sigma y minus sigma x over 2 multiplied by sine 2 theta plus tau xy multiplied by cos 2 theta. From these derivations, we may draw some observations about the transformations of normal and shear stress. Both the normal and shear stress are trigonometric functions of the rotation angle and initial stresses. As seen in the figure for an example of a complete 180 degree element rotation, the following relationships occur. Normal stress reaches its maximum and minimum value when shear stress is equal to zero. These maximum and minimum values are referred to as principal stresses for normal stress. Principal stress occurs 45 degrees apart from shear stress peaks. Shear stress peaks occur 90 degrees apart from other shear stress peaks, and principal stress peaks occur 90 degrees apart from each other as well. So before I proceed, does anyone have any questions about um, stress transformations and how they were defined? Okay, then I will move on. So to developing more circle. As you may observe, the equations for tau xy prime and sigma prime are actually parametric equations of a circle. What this means is that they each describe one component of a circle and are both functions of theta. We will consider sigma x prime as the x component and tau xy prime as the y component. The corresponding circle equation for these parameters is shown below. And we may see how this equation resembles the typical formula for the parametric equation of a circle. Now, I know what you might be thinking. I don't see what's so great about more circles so far. Can we just use the equations to solve for sigma x prime and tau xy prime? Well, guess what? There's more to more circle, and this equation can be further simplified. The radius r may be considered as the square root of sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 squared plus tau xy squared. We may consider x we may consider sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 as the average normal stress denoted by sigma average. This means we can further simplify the radius as the square root of sigma x minus sigma average squared plus tau xy squared. This simplified equation for more circle is shown. Sigma x prime minus sigma average squared plus tau xy prime squared is equal to r squared. We have the values for r and sigma average so we may graph this relationship. Does anyone have any questions about um, how we got more circle from the derivations from stress transformations? Okay, then I'll move on to um, how to use more circle. So to use more circle, seven steps must be followed. First, we must establish our base coordinate system. Then we must define our stress signs, then draw our axes for more, cir more circle, then plotting, we have to plot the center of the circle, then establish a starting point from the given stresses, then find the circle's radius, then rotate counterclockwise to the point of new stress that we wish to, that we wish to find. So establishing a base coordinate system is simple. We just use positive y is upwards and positive x is right. Our rotation axis orientation will depend on our rotation angle. Uh, next, we must define stress signs. What I mean by sign is whether the stress is positive or negative. Positive normal stre stress should point away from the surface. Shear stress is positive if the direction it points has the same sign as, as the figure it is on, the figure surface it's on. For example, the right side of the figure on the left, on the right side of the figure on the left, the shear stress points towards the positive y direction as, and is on the positive y face. These signs match, so the shear stress is positive. On the right figure, on the right side of the figure on the right, the shear stress points towards the negative y direction and is on the positive x face. These signs do not match, so shear stress is negative. Think of it as your traditional sign convention for multiplying positive and negative numbers. Two of the same signs are positive and two opposing signs are negative. Normally, signs are given in the problem. However, you may be only given a figure and you have to define um, your signs. Next, we draw the axes for more, more circle. For the horizontal direction, the positive sigma x prime goes in the right direction. For the vertical direction, the positive tau xy prime goes down. This sign convention allows for the rotation direction of the element in real life to match the more circle rotation direction. Then we must plot the center of more circle. 
The center of Mohr's circle occur occurs at point sigma average n0, meaning shear stress is zero. The formula for sigma average is sigma x plus sigma y divided by two, as stated earlier. And this is denoted by the letter C on this particular figure. Next, we may establish our starting point from the given stresses. The starting point normally used is sigma x and tau xy. If both stresses are positive, the starting point will be in the lower right quadrant, and this is the most common case. The starting point is denoted by the tip line in the figure. Now we may find the radius of the circle. We already know the formula for the radius as a function of the given stresses. Now that we know the radius, we know all possible stress conditions arising from the rotation of the element. However, we must still use a starting point as a reference. Next, we rotate counterclockwise to the point of new stress that we wish to find. Using our sign convention, the rotation direction is the same on more circle as uh, the rotation direction on the elements. However, one important aspect to consider is that a rotation on more, cir more circle is double the rotation on the real elements. For example, if you wanted to find stresses due to a 40 degree rotation on an element, you would need to rotate 80 degrees on more circle from your starting points. Uh, however, there can be some general notes about values on more circle. Principal stress occurs when tau x by prime is zero, and they are the maximum and minimum normal stresses, as stated earlier. Principal stresses are often denoted by sigma one and sigma two for the maximum and minimum respectively. Tau x y prime occurs at sigma average or 45 degrees from principal stresses. On more circle, this is a 90 degree rotation, however. In general, we use simple trigonometry to find stress values on more circle, as we will see in an example. So does anyone have any uh, questions on the steps on how we use more circle to find for different values at different um, rotation angles? Yeah. Okay, then I will move on to uh, my example. So consider the elements shown. The stresses on the element are as follows. Tau xy equals 20, sigma x equals 100, and sigma y equals 50. All are in megapascals. We must find the rotation angle at which the principal stresses occur and the value of the principal stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2. Steps 1 to 3 are already done as we have defined them previously, so we, we may move on to step 4. So the center of the circle may be plotted by recalling the formula for sigma average as the center occurs at point sigma average comma 0. We get a sigma average of 75 MPa and the center is shown as the green dot on the figure. Next, we must establish our starting point. In this case, our starting point is sigma x comma tau xy, or 100 MPa comma 20 MPa. This is marked as a blue dot on the figure. Next, we may find the radius of the circle. Using the formula for radius, we get a radius of 32 MPa marked by the black line. We can understand our formula better from the figure. Notice how sigma x minus sigma average is the value for the horizontal component, and tau xy is the value for the vertical component of a right angle triangle, where the hypotenuse is equal to our radius. And we draw the radius going to our starting point as previously shown. Next, we rotate counterclockwise to the point of new stress. In our case, we wish to find principal stresses. The first principal stress, sigma 1, may be found first as it is the closest to the initial point. Sigma 1 is marked on the purple dot by a purple dot on the figure. This stress is equal to the sigma average plus the radius, as the center point of a circle plus the radius gives a value on the circle's perimeter. Sigma 1 is equal to 107 MPa. Next, we may find the angle we must travel a long more circle to reach sigma 1, denoted by alpha. The angle alpha may be found through trigonometry using the triangle described previously to find the radius. For the horizontal length of the triangle is sigma x minus sigma average. The vertical length is tau xy and the hypotenuse is r. Using tan, where tan alpha is equal to tan xy, oh tau xy I mean, divided by sigma x minus sigma average, we get alpha equal to be 38.6 degrees counterclockwise when isolating for it. From this, we may find the other principal stress, sigma 2, marked by the yellow dot. The value of sigma 2 is, the, is sigma average minus the radius, which is 43 MPa. Its angle relative to the starting position, denoted by beta, may be found by adding 180 degrees to the previous principal stress, which gives beta to be 218.6 degrees counterclockwise. 
now that we have our principal stresses, we must take we must make one more adjustment. We call that an angle rotate on more circle represents twice the rotation on the actual elements. This means we must divide our angles by two. Sigma X is 107 MPa at 19.3 degrees counterclockwise, and Sigma 2 is 43 MPa at 109 degrees counterclockwise. The max shear stress occurs at tau x phi prime, and they are denoted as the brown dots on the circle as shown. The figures on the right show the principal stresses and the maximum shear stress, with the principal stress being the top and maximum shear stress being the bottom. As saw previously, principal stress occurs at 19.3 degrees um, counterclockwise relative to the center of the elements. The maximum shear stress occurs 45 degrees after the principal stress, or 64.3 degrees counterclockwise in this case. So these are just some general notes about values on Mohr's circle, and they can be summarized as the following. The first principal stress, sigma 1, is equal to the sigma average plus the radius. The second principal stress, sigma 2, is equal to sigma average minus the radius. The magnitude of tau x y prime is equal to the radius, which, and it always occurs at sigma x prime equal to sigma average. And then some general notes about the angles on Mohr's circle. So the first principal stress, sigma 1, is normally the angle we solve for relative to the starting position. Sigma 2 is 180 degrees counterclockwise from sigma 1 on Mohr's circle, which translates to 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation from sigma 1 on the actual element. The maximum negative value of tau x y prime is 90 degrees counterclockwise from sigma one on more circle and a 45 degrees counterclockwise rotation from sigma one on the actual element. The maximum positive or tau x, the maximum positive tau x y prime or negative tau x y prime is 200, I mean the maximum positive tau x y prime is a 270 degrees counterclockwise rotation from sigma one on more circle and the 135 degrees counterclockwise rotation from sigma one on the actual element. So does anyone have any questions on uh, the example or just more circle in general? Yeah, uh, thank you for listening. And uh, this is a helpful link for the derivations I found. And I hope you uh, learned about more circle today. Thank you for coming. <laughs>